The issues and opinions presented on this program are for informational and entertainment purposes only. They do not reflect the views of NLB nor its employees. Oh yeah, it's five o'clock. Ya tu sabe que hora es. It's Pepe Villete Uncensored on Sirius XM 153. Que hola mi gente! Oye, oh, yeah, I said que hola mi gente! Vaya! Oye, today is a very, very special day. I am honored to have as a guest on the show today somebody that I personally admire and respect very much. Among her very many accomplishments, I can start listing them by and we could be here for an hour. Pero she was the first American Cuban American and the first Hispanic woman elected to Congress. Yeah. She was the first Republican in the House to support same-sex marriage. Yeah. She's the first Republican member of the U.S. Congress to co-sponsor the Respect for Marriage Act, which would repeal the Defense of Marriage Act. Era tremenda, tremenda hija puta. Yeah. And she is currently the senior Republican woman in the U.S. House of Representatives. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the show, Congresswoman Ileana ross Layton. Well, yeah, thank you so much. Let me tell you, this is a real political risk for me. Bueno. <laughs> <laughs> but a real honor. Muchas real gracias. Honor. Thank you. Don't worry about it. I, I'll try not to be too rachetero out of respect, <laughs> Congresswoman. No, I respect you. I hope that that's not an insult to you. No, no, tranquilo. Yo llamo suyo. Yo de Guanabacoa, chica. Yo soy tremendo sucio. <laughs> But I've heard so much about the show, and uh, and I was really, uh, I really wanted to uh, uh, to reach out to you. You had uh, posted a very funny uh, tweet about my face when uh, Obama was giving the State of the Union uh, last Tuesday. Oh, eso fue que tremendo guapería. Oh, my gosh. Eso fue, look. No, eso fue cara de guapería. And I did eso. not even realize I was doing that. That was, it was it? That was guapería, and what people are saying, say, ¿Tú sabes por qué tienes esa cara? Porque parece que lo que está hablando Obama es tanta mierda que le dio peste. <laughs> and you put Cuban guapería, be like, Mm. Nah. <laughs> bueno, hablando de Cuban guapería right now, porque I want to jump in oye, by a feet first. Congresswoman, I tell you, yo soy tremendo jodido, pero cuando viene a ciertos temas, olvídate. We have to talk Cuba. Vamos. Ok, mira. Y no Congresswoman, Ileana. Ah, bueno, ahora sí. Ok, a mí me dice Pepito como tú quieras. <laughs> Pepito. Oye, mira. A pupil, okay, I'm sure you've heard a million times from a million different people, okay, is studied from uh, January 7th to the 11th that found strong support among Democrats and independents, okay, that for uh, establishing diplomatic, uh, you know, relations with Cuba. 74% of Democrats, 67% of independents, and 40, 48% of Republicans are for the reestablishment of relations con Cuba. You and Senator Rubio have both have voiced some very clear and valid problems with Obama's executive orders, but these Pew polls have suggested que, vaya, no le importa a nadie, que esta gente no, it's falling on deaf ears. Is it at a point que ya lo tenemos que decir nosotros como cubanos, que dejen que se traigan contra la pared y vean que they're going about this the wrong way? Y si no... ¿Cómo se arregla el problema? Bueno, you know, Pepe, I would be for having diplomatic relations with, with Castro, too, with, with Cuba, if we had certain conditions, if we had freedom, if we had democracy, multi-party elections. But the, the reality, the sad reality que nosotros, nuestra comunidad exiliada, lo conoce bien, is that it doesn't matter what we give to the Castros, they will manage to miss an opportunity to miss it. I mean, they're just going to mess up every time. An example, ayer Raúl Castro en la cumbre dijo, oh yeah, we're going to establish diplomatic relations, but give us back Guantánamo, eh, uh, give us back uh, all the money that we lost por el bloqueo. Reparation. Reparations. Uh, also lift eh, all the embargo and no radio and TV Martí. No, keeps no, no fue putting, radio, not just re, radio and TV Martí. Este fue, no, no, porque no, Nino corrected me on this one. No anti-Castro speech 
coming from, from the, United the United States. States. So, así que él no está regulando free speech. It's like they have no concept of what this country stands for and our values. Pero qué es lo que values. se piensa la vieja atrevida esa. Es lo que quiero saber, lo que se piensa de Raúl Castro ese. ¿Por qué no entra? <laughs> ¿Cómo se arregla el problema? Porque, yes, it is a problem, pero if we're not clearly Obama is, you know, we've had such many, so many developments in the last week, just alone in the last week since, you know, the, uh, the, the State of the Union. How do we fix it? Mira, y, y ayer mismo, one of, one of the critics of the regime was sentenced to a year in prison. Ayer mismo, and what was his crime? They have this weird Tom Cruise Minority Report type uh, movie thing. They call it dangerousness that could lead to a crime. It's like a pre-crime. Wow. A, wow. a pre-crime. Y este, este pobre muchacho, a, a, a rapper, critic of the regime, ah, sí. sentenced to a year. De nuevo. For, de nuevo. Así que el sexto, que es, eh, todavía está en la cárcel, and he's been there, and he's going to rot there until, and there's no conditions, porque el presidente Obama no ha puesto ni una condición para Raúl Castro to, to meet. Nothing. Do you so, think that strengthened, you know, because I've always viewed the embargo as a symbol more than I have as a, you know, an element that has been effective in the last, you know, it, it, essentially it, it didn't really have a lot of teeth, right? because since a, a Clinton, we've been providing them with medicine and we've been providing them with, uh, you know, or selling to them, uh, you know, comida and medicine, right? Así mismo, mira, you could actually have a container right here outside the studio, fill it up with medicine, have another container, fill it up with food, and you can either donate it Or you could sell it. There are no prohibitions whatsoever. Right. And what happens? La gente de Cuba no tiene comida y no tiene medicina. So it's not that the lack of U.S. goods, it's just that the delivery system there is all about maintaining themselves in power. And they don't care about the Cuban people. And they have no concept of what this country is. Y por eso Raúl nos dice, no, no criticism of our regime from the United States. I mean, you've got to be crazy to think that such a thing is possible. Do you or any of your, you know, any, like Marco, uh, Senator Rubio, I know, said, or, 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 or uh, uh, Congressman Diaz Ballard have anything to, that, you know, if they looked up to, you, to you guys for suggestions, is there anything that we can do at this point? Bueno, well, we're going to try to reframe the argument. I understand that people say, look, we've tried this for all these years. It hasn't worked. First of all, I say to them, you know, the embargo was never to bring down a regime. The embargo was a statement of principles Absolutely. porque le habían robado todo de las propiedades americanas. I mean, they took everything where those hotels are. Well, whatever. They took all the property. That's another thing. But it was never to bring down the regime. But we want to turn that around and say, look, uh, Who owns the tourism operation in Cuba? It's the military run by General, you know, self-proclaimed General Raul Castro. So we want to turn it around so that people know that the the money for tourism is never going to get to the Cuban people. Y no estamos hablando de familia, familia. It's not about that at all. It's about unbridled tourism that is only going to feed the machine of repression. Porque ellos no van a cambiar. And it's not me saying it. Es que Raul Castro se Puso el uniforme militar to say, we're not going to change. I mean, he says it, he advertises it, and unfortunately for the Cuban people, that regime has been rewarded. Entonces, personas como Antunes, oh man, Pepe, you should have Antunes on. That guy is such a, is such a true believer, tough guy. Más de 17 años en la cárcel. He was your guest in he, the... He, yeah, and uh, he, was, he was Speaker Boehner's guest, and I had one of the, one of the daughters of Armando Alejandre, yeah, who was the, uh, from the Brothers, Brothers to, to the, the Rescue. Rescue Shootdown, and it was Gerardo Hernandez, one of the co-conspirators of her dad's murder, who was pardoned by Obama. And he's one of the heroes. It's like it's an Alice in Wonderland. But we're losing the argument. I am aware of that. But we've got the votes because we're going to reframe our, our message so that people know who is responsible for the misery in Cuba. And it's not the U.S. It's the Cuban dictatorship. So we're going to win it, Pepe. Let me tell you, we're going to win that fight with the embargo. We're going to win that fight uh, against all of these loosenings of uh, of regulations. Why? Because Raul Castro is going to make the argument for I mean, for he's us. already done it. Yeah. He's, he's stepping started. on it. He's stepping on it time and time again. Every time he opens his mouth, it's like more conditions— 
And Obama is like an overeager Boy Scout. Que quiere que la, que, que la abuelita cruce la, la calle. And the lady says, I don't want to cross. Yeah. And he goes, you're going to cross. But it's not happening. The, he's not going to cross that street. It, it's almost, it almost seems, you know, like if it's, it's como una burla. ¿Me entiende? Como like a purposeful, you know, way of Raúl Raúl Castro or the Castro regime showing to the world how they were able to defeat the, you know, quote unquote imperialist. And it's true, Pepe. When you look, you know what a what a blueprint for every regime. Oye, oh, yeah. get some a, a, a U.S. citizen. Ponlo en la cárcel cinco años. Uh, did you see poor Alan Gross? I mean. No teeth. Oh. And, and look at how the spies went back to Cuba. Gorditos todos. So <laughs> hold a, an American citizen hostage. Uh, deny every basic liberty to your people. And at the end of the day, the United States is going to reward you. So that's why Maduro, Nicolás Maduro de Venezuela, ya dijo, oye, si quieren Leopoldo López que esté en libertad, we're going to free him. You give us one of the guys that you have in prison here. Everybody now wants to make a deal. Yeah. And look, look at Sergeant Bergdahl. Maybe he's going to face desertion charges. I don't know. It looks that way, but maybe not. We traded him for five Taliban who are now, the news today was they've rejoined the fight against the United States. Incredible. It just, you know, we're rewarding the wrong people. Yeah, no, no. I mean, to, do you, you know, President Obama made a, a statement that he wants the, uh, you know, at the, the State of the Union talking about, ¿cómo se llama el, el prison in Guantanamo? A, a, sí, Gitmo. Gitmo. Uh -huh, okay. He's, you know, committed to closing Gitmo down. Is that any indication to you que van a cerrar, que le van a regalar para atrás a Guantanamo Bay? No way. Porque, mira, nosotros tenemos... That uh, covenant that we signed, a treaty in the 1930s, and it's U.S. property. Now, that treaty can be changed, but this is this is the thing, Pepe. The United States Congress controls, we have the power of the purse. It means that we can say, as we've said in other bills, you can't spend any money to close this facility down, and you cannot transfer it to the regime. So we're going to make sure that President Obama, with his executive orders, cannot cross that line because he wants to close Guantanamo. But that would be bad enough because you got to have a place to, to store these guys. You can't have them back in the battlefield. But to give the, the property back to the uh, Castro regime, not back to the regime, it was never theirs to begin with, but back to Cuban ownership would be dangerous it was not not foolish but dangerously foolish absolutely do you know and there's a there's a paradox too when you come to think about like the two stances you know like miami it's, excuse me very divided in this i've seen at least in my you know it's like no, old generation new generation the new generation is looking at it through the eyes of you know somewhat naivete no que miran la cosa y dicen well we're hoping for the future That, let's see. We haven't had 50 years of of, of, of of nothing has happened. Let's try something new. Ahora viene la, a Raúl, la jodera, y decir, no, esto, esto, esto y lo otro. These people are starting to see now that, you know, the, the what caro that's there. What we've been there. facing. What we've and been facing. And that's the thing, you know, I think that the noble, the nobleness of the American spirit, that that idealism, that, that, that romantic view that our presence in Cuba is going to make everything different. No. That Canadians have been there, they haven't changed it. Mexicans have gone there, they haven't changed it. Europeans flood the beaches, they haven't changed it. But when Americans start coming, oh boy, that'll change. But what they don't realize is, All of these resorts, first of all, they're usually in isolated areas, and it's not a really people-to-people -people contact. What small businesses? Oh, yeah, I, maybe the, somebody's got a little restaurant in their homes, but everything is owned by the state. state. Run, yeah. It's all state-run state and state-operated, especially the tourism sector. So we're going to do our best to turn that message around, have people understand, just Play the speeches of Raul Castro. That tells you everything you need to know. You're much more optimistic than I am. I have a I have a theory of my own. I think pop culture can help people out <laughs> with that. Yeah. The you black started. I think the black <laughs> mad the black uh, market you know culture of, of buscando la poliquieta porque no hay no hay nada. Tiene que resolver. Porque hay que resolver. I think that four generations of reinforcement of that throughout you know these look at this, throughout this regime has programmed the people to you know to a point where. If you were to reestablish or if you were to establish any sort of capitalistic society or, you know, to go from nothing to some to abundance from one minute to another, that mindset of buscándose la por la izquierda, como abrir un Starbucks en La Habana, 
¿Cuánto tiempo se va a demorar? Mientras, before that Starbucks, todo el frappuccino mix de Starbucks de pronto se desaparezca. And all of a sudden you have coquito all over Varadero Beach. <laughs> coquito. Okay. And then, you know, this is continuing on with this absurd theory of mine, but what happens is those American companies want to stay open. They outsource their work. Traen un labor force para dentro y ahí viene el Castro government de nuevo a decir, bueno, el pueblo cubano aquí está cachado porque no trae, they won't hire a labor force that's uh, That's, that's right. Cuban. And, and you know, we've got, to, we've got to educate folks, especially members of Congress to say, look, si tú quieres abrir un hotel, First of all, you're not going to own the land because that no. private ownership, it doesn't exist. Then you can't hire your own workers. The Cuban government hires the workers. Tú le pagas al régimen en dollars. El régimen le paga a los workers in pesos. And the best jobs are always in the tourist areas because right. a doctor, you make nothing. And But in a tourist area, that's where you make a little bit of money. But you cannot hire your own workers. I mean, and, and what's amazing to me, Pepe, is that... Uh, Some of the biggest uh, opponents of free trade with Colombia, uh, members of Congress who said, oh, we can't pass that free trade with Colombia agreement because Colombia is terrible on human rights and uh, Colombia is terrible on on union rights. And I'm saying, yeah, and in Cuba, there are no unions and and there are no so human body, rights. So they want system. to lift the embargo, total trade with Cuba. No problem. But, oh, we can't we can't trade with uh, with Colombia because there are human rights abuses going on in Colombia. It's a it's a double standard. Do you think is, it, is Cuba in some sort of special, you know, what, what do you attribute the special treatment of Cuba, you know, in the last 50 years? Is it just proximity or is there something else? You know, it, it hurts us que Cuba está tan cerca. It really does. I think that if we were uh, like, you know, Burma, uh, Myanmar, I think we would have been better off because people would say, you know, we, we were going to sanction the government. We're going to take these tough stands. But es que Cuba es como Corea del Norte. You know, Cuba is not like. China or Vietnam, it's like it's like the hermit kingdom of North Korea, where it's you thinking this this is an unreal place. You have the Cuban people who are struggling every day to get by, and then you have these Amer these uh, these foreign owned uh, foreign operated uh, hotels where. People are thinking, oh, the Cuban people are lovely. They don't know the Cuban people. They just know the cabana boy and the and the and the, uh, the facade. You know yeah, the, the facade. facade. Yeah, la muela and nice. to make it happy. It's oh, right. Para, para ganar yeah. for the tips. But you know, it, it brings up another interesting point. Then at this point, then if we are going to let's say we are successful in convincing Obama, tú sabes, oye, este tipo está jodiendo mucho. Hay que What at that point do we say to the people that have family on the island that still support some sort of reestablishment? You know, yeah, okay, they got their beak wet. Ahora lo tenemos like now what? You know, where do we go from here? Mandamos SEAL Team Six para que se echen a los socios. Oye, me mandas a mí y yo en resuelto. Mira, soy muñeco. Uh, nobody sees me coming. I know that you would be a good uh, a good Delta Force, but. Uh, You're right. What what happens now? Yo creo que el presidente se va a escachar. I don't I don't think this is going to be a successful uh, move, but he will call it a success. And this is going to be a blueprint for Iran. That's what worries me a lot. Yeah. Mira, Cuba, of course, is near and dear to my heart and, and to my district, too. Pero this is going to be the blueprint for Iran because el presidente va a quitar a Iran from the state sponsor of terrorism list. Uh, because we're going to have this nuclear deal with Iran, and we're going to say they're they're you know they're good people. They're going to use nuclear power for domestic use. It's not going to be a problem. And then we're going to force Israel to make a terrible deal with the Palestinians. And then who knows what we'll do with North Korea? Este presidente wants to earn the 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 Nobel Peace Prize that he did not deserve when he first got elected without even being president. They gave him the Nobel Peace Prize, and now in these next two years. Oh my golly, he's going to do everything to uh, to appease our enemies in the guise of world peace and understanding and and uh, and and kumbaya and it, it's going to make us less safe. I wish that we could we could trust these guys. I don't trust Raul Castro, I don't trust Kim Jong Un, Un, I don't trust uh, Rouhani, I I don't trust any of these guys. And and I fear that the Cuba model is going to be repeated in Iran, North Korea, and Israel is going to be forced to, to make peace with the Palestinians by giving away land. Hmm. 
That's a that's an interesting. You, you, you know, me tiraste ahí bastante. Future, almost. That's a it's it's a very like it's almost like the axis of evil has been turned on its head. It's not like the axis of oh, coño, todo el mundo se lleva de lo más bien. Uh, axis of evil, they're not that yeah. bad. But you yeah, know, if, of, if, if you bad. listen to what the president said in the State of the Union, that's why I had that that face, that no, uh, constipated face. Ooh, because I'm thinking, gosh, no mencionó democracia ni libertad. Well, the possibility. It turned into the, the possibility. The possibility. And we're going to extend the hand of friendship to the Cuban people. The Cuban people don't have any problem with the United States. They die trying to come to the United States. But do we have enough dissidents? You know, that's another question that I think is important and relevant. I mean, are there enough dissidents in Cuba Uh, you know, to really bring down the machine. Is it an economic problem or is it like a sociopolitical problem? Is it something that people, si tú le mejoró, mejora their, you know, ability to make a living. Vamos a decir, ¿verdad? Like, ya el cubano se ve con the means of having a better life for himself, of earning money and things like that. Are they going to, after four generations of programming of socialism, of seeing all of this communism, of depending on la, la, la libretica, having free, you know, state-sponsored uh, supposed healthcare, uh, free education, lo que sea, are they going to be able, to, do they really want to change that at the risk of, you know, going into a system that's more like ours? Is it ever going to be like ours? Bueno, es que Raul Castro can't afford any opening. He can't afford to to wean the people off off. Uh, the, the the bureaucracy because he is so intimidated that a rapper has to be sentenced to jail because he's intimidated by that. Las damas de blanco que reciben palos and he's intimidated by that. And when, when President Obama met with Peña Nieto, the president of, of Mexico, he asked him to intervene to try to get knucklehead Raul Castro to, to do something right in terms of human rights. He's got to be begging every leader, please help me let this This thug do the right thing, and and he's seeing that no amount of pressure is going to work on this guy. Hasta ayer mismo que nos puso más condiciones todavía. I mean, I don't know what else he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna present a bill soon for I don't know, a ten billion dollars, saying that we Una owe him. Por, es lo que Una foto de, 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 for a bloqueo. De, de, ajá, <laughs> mira. Oye, I'm gonna, one last question about Cuba before we move on, because there's a lot I wanted to cover with you here. Um, y creo que se me olvidó para eh, But what we said about dissonance, <laughs> let me get back to that. O solamente un, un, sin duda. Antunes, I, I mean, he's like a Jose Martí. He just takes he just takes it and keeps on going. What a hero. His wife, Iris. Who What a hero. A, What a hero. Guajiro, Guajiro. <laughs> His wife, Edis, runs the Rosa Parks Center for, for nonviolence. They are incredible wow. people. But how many people are willing to take that? Oye, nosotros estamos aquí en la Sahuesera, bien cómodo, en Versailles, wow. talking trash about, about Castro. It's very comfortable for us. Pero estar allá Pero y hablar hay... en contra del régimen, man, that's gutsy because it doesn't just come after you. They come after your family. And that's why Castro has this catch and release program now. Yeah, he doesn't sentence too many people to 20 years in jail. Uh, now he does. He gets you. He intimidates you. Maybe he'll sentence you for a year, but maybe you'll serve a little bit of time. He'll he'll throw you out, and then he goes after your family. Entonces la gente dice, you know, I'm willing to take the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, pero mi familia. So it's it's just got total control of intimidation. It's hard for dissidents. So it, it does beg the question then at that point, if they are the ones living with, shouldn't they, you know, be given more, you know, like the voice of the Cuban people be heard more? Like, for example, you know, we hear the minority voice of the dissident, right? Of Joanny, of, 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 uh, of el señor, este, perdona que se... Atunes. Atunes. You know, there's do, so many like him. The 12, you know, like the 12 million others, though. I mean, that yeah. majority. Do you think that? Bueno, they... pero what we should have done, Pepe, is to have a program instead of giving away the store to Raul Castro, right. which is all that President Obama is asking with no conditions to Raul to change it all. We should have an aggressive program to help the dissidents, to help the families of the dissidents so that the dissidents say, hey, you know, I can go out there and I can criticize the regime and maybe they'll throw me in jail but somebody's going to help me with my family. Alguien le va a resolver a mi familia. And we have nothing. We, we've tried to put it to, in place and the president does nothing to help the opposition and, and that's the problem. The opposition then feels betrayed 
by President Obama, porque ellos dicen, oye, nos han dado palos, hemos sufrido en la cárcel, and now we're going to give everything to Raul Castro with no conditions. Dude, we've been here sweating and, and we've been bleeding, yeah. and, and everybody throws us uh, a bone, not even a bone. Are, is, are porque you, con un bone you can make a soup in Cuba, <laughs> but not even that. <laughs> well, Lily could help you with that, porque ella, ella era chef. Oye, um, is there any other opposition? Do you, I mean, you know, in the in 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 you know in Congress, in the House, or in the Senate, aside from you know yourself? Uh, sí, sí, sí. Y Pepe se va a ver esta semana próxima. Mira, el martes, eh, Marco's going to start the in, first th hearing. That are in, that are advising the president. Yes, I mean. the, the, but Tuesday we're going to have a hearing in the Senate side, and uh, and Rosa Maria Paya whose father mysteriously steered off the road, killed. Uh, he, she's going to be testifying Wednesday, our Committee on Foreign Affairs. We're going to have a hearing with Roberta Jacobson and company so they can tell us. You know, all these deals are made in secret. Doesn't the American public deserve to know what's happening with yeah, these absolutely. deals? Yes, uh, I'm not right. saying Congress. I'm saying the people need to know. Yeah. And then... And then uh, uh, At Thursday, uh, Congressman Chris Smith of New Jersey va a tener una audiencia uh, where he's going to invite a lot of dissidents, including Antunes. He's going to testify as to the real human rights situation on the island. So this next week, things are going to start rolling, and, and I think el ambiente va a cambiar. La cosa se va a poner caliente. Bueno, let me, uh, let's move on to uh, another topic that I saw. I was looking on your website and I realized that, you know, you and I have been uh, concerned with a problem that I see facing the Republican Party in, you know, in the future. You know, appealing to younger voters and gaining that younger, you know, that, 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 that fresh new crop of people that are going to lead the Republican Party, you know, to the future. Um, I think that, You know, I've, the last week I've been dedicated to that. And one of the reasons that I think a lot of young people tend to side with the Democratic Party is because, you know, they can relate or they understand better the social freedoms and the demo, you know, that the Democrats emphasize when they're at the when they're on the media. You know, as opposed to the economic ones that the Republicans talk about. But that's so it's easier for these younger people to listen to these social freedoms. How does the Republican Party expect to appeal to the younger voter in America in the future when everything they hear and see in the mainstream media is so far removed from their expectations of what a politician should stand for? I'll give you an example. I don't have to morally agree with abortion to realize that I'm stifling women's rights when I take away her freedom to choose. An analogy for that would be, I don't agree with the use of the N-word, but I fully realize that the use of the N-word, making it illegal, is wrong, okay? Um, do you agree that a woman should have a right to choose regardless of your moral objective, objection to abortion? Well, I think that we need to look at abortion as to what it is. The more science tells us that it is the, the, the taking of, uh, of an innocent life. So I'm 100% pro-life. It doesn't mean that someone who is for, uh, for abortion is anti-life. I right. think we need to change the way we talk about it because when we say, I'm for this and you're anti-that, then you're already building a barrier. You're already yes. saying, okay, I'm here, you're over there, and the barrier is so, so big, it's difficult for anybody to come together. So it doesn't mean that you need to change your principles. It doesn't mean that you need to change where you stand. Everybody feels strongly about all of these topics that we're talking about. But But don't make it sound like you are the end all of of uh, of the truth. I mean, right. God has not endowed me with being with perfection, a uh, perfect only God. And the way that we talk about it alienates so many people, whether it's this or whether it's drugs or whether it's language, you know, the the thought police uh, and and the this version of the Republican Party that young people have, that we are the party of no, you can't do that, you can't do that, you need to do this and you need to do that. So we're never going to capture the youth vote, we'll never capture the women's vote, we'll never capture Hispanic or Asian Americans, you know, minorities are growing, as you know, my gosh, uh, minority is the, is the biggest uh, voting demographic and 
every time we're losing, 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 losing. And if we have Mitt Romney, he's a good man, but his immigration policy, what is it? Self-deporting. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I don't even like somebody's going to throw himself uh, over over the rear why. rear grant. I mean, I don't even know uh, what look, it is. I don't be long. I'm just going to walk away. Huh? Bye. Yeah, I'm going I mean, back. it's I'm going just back over there. <laughs> we're never we we've just uh, this election nah, nah, nah. of the President Obama's reelection was such a message to us that we've got to make up for lost ground and we've got to talk in a different way. Uh, and it doesn't mean trick people. I'm not talking about using words to trick people into thinking we're we're about something else because no, we're not Democrat yeah. lights. We are we are Republicans. We stand for limited government, less taxation. We used to stand for for more freedom. I think very few people think of less freedom with the Republican Party. You know, what's interesting is something— I mean, more freedom. They think we're restrictive freedom. The the Republican Party freed the slaves. The party of Lincoln. Oh, my gosh. Once upon a time, uh, you know, the the first black senator since Reconstruction, Republican. In fact, when you look now in in the Senate, uh, we have the only African-American senator is Tim Scott, Republican from South Carolina. We have two uh, African-Americans in the Republican Party in the House. Mia Love, who is a Haitian-American Mormon. Is that amazing? That's like a fifer. And she's in a from like Wyoming. Yeah, from Utah, from Utah, Utah. and and, uh, but very conservative. So we're looking at her to say, you know, how how do we talk to this new generation so that people at least don't dislike us as much? I mean, young people are totally turned off to our party uh, because we have this air about us like we know everything and everybody else is an idiot. We uh, got to change you know, that. I, I'll tell you, and I commend you for this Congresswoman, because you know, you say we, and you take ownership for this, but you have been, you know, against your party on several issues. And I want to make sure that, you know, you receive credit of that very progressive on a lot of your views, you know, especially, well, we'll get into that later, but, you know, you bring up a good point, and this is something that's you know segueing into what I what I believe has turned in you know in contrast and turned people off, especially the young people, because the people that follow me, I mean, are between the ages. I got a you know I got tremendo audience, but the main people that follow me are between the ages of like eighteen and like forty five. So it's a huge range. That but is you'd great. Be, yeah. You'd be you'd be yeah. you know it's insane how many people in that 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 eighteen to thirty five to forty age range are you know involved in my stuff, and I see it from them. I see it from their speech. Like a big point of contention, okay, against the Republican Party is the Judeo is how the Judeo Christian beliefs, okay are perceived to influence decisions on policy, okay? Like, despite the idea that there exists a separation of church and state in our country, ¿me entiende? Like, sí. how, every time you see these primaries before they start choosing a Republican, it's all about, like, you know, it becomes almost, I feel like I'm watching a, a like church. It, like they're running for Pope. <laughs> and, and, you know, and the election is not about choosing the best pastor for your church. Exactly. And it's not about choosing the next Pope. And like I say, perfect only God. Don't don't try to take his spot. You're not going to be substituting for God. Be, be yourself. Be authentic. And I think people will be uh, at least a little more open to what you have to say. But if your attitude is so exclusive and so so out of uh, what's going on in, in today's society, um, you'll never get that chance to win them over. I think the Republican Party, if we were uh, to really have a campaign to tell young people what we stand for, we know what young person doesn't want to own their own home. What young person Absolutely. doesn't want to start their own business? You want to pay less taxes, less regulation. That should be an uh, the, the kind of message we have. But uh, understanding that for all the social issues, you know, don't try to be don't try to be the pope. You're not running to be the pastor of your church, and that that turns a lot of people off. We, but you know. It, <laughs> The First Amendment says it. I mean, you know, in the First Amendment, there's a stipulation that says there is that, that no, I, I made a note of it here it's because I want to quote it exactly. Okay. It's the one, it's a, it's a piece that tells you there's a separation between church and state. Okay. That's Congress will make no law respecting an establishment of religion. It's a practical approach to the principle of law, in my opinion, and morality in a diverse society that values freedom 
over, you know, a, a personal belief. If we lived in a homogenous society, like say, I don't know, Iran, where, you know, everybody's Muslim. Most of the people are Muslim. Yeah, maybe perhaps you can run on Sharia law. You can run on yeah. this. You can run on that. But we live in a, in a country with 300 million people. And the, the, the founding fathers were, you know, wise enough to include in the First Amendment this idea that, you know, Congress will not make any law respecting the establishment of a religion. Right. Why? What is it? What, what is it that, that 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 Republicans don't understand about, like the the, the presidential? And I'm asking you for the party. I and you know, I think I think Pepe, part of it is that the way that the that the districts are drawn, uh, we have this uh, this kind of gerrymandered system mm. where mm. people have a yes. district that their district is so unlike my district. For example, mm -hmm. my my district is. So Hispanic, you know, that not necessarily all Cuban, but they come from Central America. They come from South America. And and my district's so different than others. And people come from these districts that when they're drawn, we all have the same number, 750,000 more or less people we represent. But they only go to the meetings of people who agree with them. And so then their ideas are reinforced back to them. And so they're thinking, okay, I am running to be the pastor of my district. You know, that's no, no, you're running to be the member of Congress who's got a lot of different views and that we are supposed to be the party of freedom. We've gone so far off the rails of why, of why, uh, what we stand for as a, as a, uh, uh, as a country and as a party. And that's why I worry about this next presidential campaign. You know, they're all good and honorable people. But when I'm looking at, you know, Rick Santorum and Oye, Rick Ted Perry. Cruz. Ted uh, Cruz, perdóname. Ted Cruz, que está loco para carajo. Well, he helps us a lot on Cuba, so I'm not going to... No, no, but he's, he's Cuban, he's Cubano, ¿verdad? Sí, es Cuban. Cubano. Y su padre es súper Cubano. Sí, ajá. ¿Y qué le pasó a este duro? No, but on Cuba, he's going to help us out a lot. Bueno, he's going to help, saying, he's help us a lot, pero, oye, no, the rest of it, he sounds like Ned... Because he's going to bring a lot of people with him. He sounds but, like Ned Flanders from The Simpsons when he talks. <laughs> El tipo, no, el tipo tiene un he's a great public speaker. What he's a say? great he's public a, speaker, yeah. but the things he says, vaya, no sé. I, 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 I you know. took 25 but people and him over to but, the pastor. Know, <laughs> but Rick Santorum, you know, yeah, they're, they're wonderful people, but I'm thinking, who are we going to uh -huh. bring in to vote for these candidates? And, uh, you know, it's like the retread of, of so many other uh, campaigns. And... Thank goodness we've got Hillary Clinton on the other side, who's a retread too. So is maybe it's Bush versus Clinton. That'll be a good yes. setup. I think Jeb, so we is, don't have, Jeb is great. Jeb He's is got, great. Yeah, we talked knows, about that the other Jeb and Maguito, something like that. You know, <laughs> Jeb you know something that would make us proud to be for them and uh, great uh, guys who understand freedom and understand uh, the Condoleezza. message, Ooh. the message for uh, for the younger generation and for to to expand our base and grow the tent. You know, we used to be wanting. To grow the tent. Now it's a tent, and we and we and we're trying to block people and yeah. doing everything possible to 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 push them aside so they don't join the tent party. So uh, I I, I'm worried about our future. I got a suggestion for a campaign: attack the word "free." <laughs> Enough with the word "free." Well, yeah, free, total free. Total free. free. Free community college. Hey, it's free. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, <laughs> free hey, that. hey. But you know what, though? You bring up a good point. We're not going to win by being Democrat light. Yeah. You know, because we're never going to offer everything that, that President Obama is going to offer. Oh, oversight. Everything is free. At least just say everything oversight. Free. oversight. Oversight. You know what I mean? It, it, Accountability for all the programs that we already have and and. You can't promise people things that you're not going to be able to deliver. See, that's what I was How getting at. How's it get going to be paid for? Free college. Look, I'm a graduate of Miami Dade College. I love community colleges, but you can't keep promising people all the time. And we're never going to grow the party by being a mini Santa. Because okay, we're not mini me. Dos años de Miami Dade no vale ni papa. No, eh, 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 no, eh, 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 e
going on the Daily Show and going on on Bill Maher and going and and Mauricio, who did such a Mauricio Claver Caron did such a great job in that uh, brand new show of uh, what what's it called? Uh, I don't know what I'm saying, baby. Comedy Tonight or show, something, uh, a nightly show. He with Larry Wilcox, so good, so good. Uh, we need to expand the base. And and uh, and gather gather more folks. I love that you're so we're progressive. Be sidelined. I love that you're so progressive in your views because you know it, it is. I think I think you're an example of where the party needs to go. You know, more more people are becoming socially more liberal. I think. Would you agree that regardless of principles, you know, or whatever, morality evolves relative to the culture in a society? No. Yes, Sounds good. I mean, I'll give you an example. Like for a long time, interracial couples. Right. Well, it was immoral to see interracial couples on the street. We evolved to accept that as a moral. Okay, the antiquated view of women in our society, gender roles, a, you know, what they were supposed to play that changed. So, and you've obviously have helped, you've been a proponent of that. You know, and a lot of times. them have been uh, court decisions. Some have been legislation, but I would say Congress has always been. For, you know, bringing up the rear. Yeah. It's really been the courts, like in same-sex marriage, that are really that are really uh, you know putting the beat on what is going to be happening. Well, accepting then that morality, you know, just the premise that morality does evolve in many respects in relations to the culture. Why is the GOP as a whole? And I'm not speaking of you. I mean the party, because we're talking about expanding the party towards young people. Why is the GOP so unwilling to evolve to accept things that society so overwhelmingly has shown support for? You bring up a great example, gay marriage. Eight out of 10 young adults support gay marriage, according to a Gallup poll. Yet you look at, you know, a map and the only ones that are, you know, anti-gay marriage, anti super anti-gay marriage are these states that are traditionally considered the red states. But I think it is a reflection of the districts that they represent. So they're not being, you know, evil folks who who are going against the wishes of their of their constituency. The way that the districts are drawn, they really are reflective of those views. Uh, and, and I think that that's why you see more uh, more U.S. senators like the ones in Maine, for example, uh, Republicans who uh, Susan Collins and, and uh, who are Republicans. Republican senators who have a different kind of constituency and who look on uh, restrictions by society as being damaging. And and uh, they're more willing to break the mold of the Republican Party. And we'll see we'll see more of that as as we have tough elections coming up. We had a great year uh, this November, but it's not going to last long. And, and people think, oh yeah, we've been vindicated because all of our views are vindicated. No, it means that people were pretty upset with the way things were going and they were sending President Obama a message. It didn't mean that they fell in love with us. So let's not read too much into this election. Right. It wasn't a love affair with us. It was a rejection of, of what was going on, the paralysis that we had with Congress in Congress. We couldn't pass anything. Uh, and and so now and that's the more Republicans damaging at the it. end. Yeah. And, and it's more damaging at the end. Because but now we end. own it. Now we own it. We got the House. We got the Senate. Now what do we do? If people see us not governing and not doing what the people want, they'll throw us out in November. And that's the great thing about democracy. We really do have representative right. democracy. And I think that folks in, in, in areas where you're represented by somebody you don't think represents your views, you know, make your views heard. I know I, I can't take a poll, Pepe. You know, I, I represent 750,000 people. We vote many times a day. There's no way I can take a poll to find out what I should do. So what I say is I vote my conscience. People know where I stand and I have an obligation to explain my vote to people. And listen, some people are very upset with me on one day and maybe they'll like me the next day. And then at the end of the day, if you're accountable, you use that word accountable and transparent, then they'll say, you know, I didn't agree with Ileana on, you know, 10 issues, but on these other issues, they're more important to me and I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. Giving, you know, and taking responsibility, I think is a very important thing that you bring up. And I, and again, I commend you on that. And I think, you know, it's a great thing that you have been one of the leaders that has been very, you know, progressive in your views. A big problem that, again, we're talking about, uh, what we're talking about is bringing younger 
people to the Republican Party and, and you know, and, and, and having, you know, making them have some faith that these are the big evil men that 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 they are. Uh, that they think they are. Yeah, and, and I didn't answer your question, Pepe. I'm sorry about same-sex marriage. You know, I think that uh, uh, the courts are way ahead. They've been they've been striking down uh, a lot of these uh, laws that have been restricting uh, who you love and who you marry. I mean, you've been Some such people, a strong supporter of the gay community that, and, it, you know, from the very, very, be, you know, beginning. It's, and, you it's know, fantastic. we used to have a—we uh, still have a libertarian streak in our, in our party that says, you know, we— Government shouldn't even be in the business of of issuing licenses in the, in the first place. You know, right. government should get out of the way. That libertarian wing is very helpful in in uh, in many of the causes. But in in terms of uh, same sex marriage, uh, people who think just like in interracial dating, oh my gosh, the world is going to come to an end if uh, if a, a, uh, an African American lady marries a white guy. Oh my gosh, society's going to you know go off the edge. And we saw, hey, you know. Nothing, nothing happened. The, yeah. the sun came up. And the same thing with same-sex marriage and people who are listening. You know, how many people do you know who are gay? Do you know somebody who's gay? And you know, not in your audience because they're, they're already young and progressive. But, you know, you'd be surprised if you talk to your abuela. They're far more understanding Absolutely. than you think. Absolutely. 100%. And I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, and with something that you brought up. You know, these, I think a lot of, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these candidates are a little out of touch with, they're not giving them the credit you know they think that people are stupid you know these some of these people in the other uh, you know i hate to bring them up again but ted cruz i think he thinks the people that thought you know that he represents are kind of well, i'll say all they want to hear is is jesus he jesus and then flanders you know say but as the senior bueno, i'm not going to join your anti-ted cruz thing I'm because anti- i need him for my for my I, one oh, I mean, big I, issue and ted cruz is going to help us i'm pro ted cruz for cuba i'm anti-ted cruz <laughs> for the his gay issue <laughs> but as the senior republican woman in the u.s house that means i'm old <laughs> oh, no, no that means no. Yeah, but oh, yeah, they were done. Nah, you you you've been there for a long time and you are the you know you 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 have the experience. Can you advise these toletes running for presidency que, that they sound like un bando de viejos soco mierda? Y si hablan con los viejos, se van a dar cuenta que esos viejos are really in more in disagreement with them when it comes to a lot of these uh, social issues than, than they think. They think that, okay, if you're in a certain demographic, you're not going to be, you're, you're going to have this view and you're right. going to do that view. They're the ones who are stereotyping. These candidates are stereotyping their voters thinking if you're in a certain demographic, then then you're not for uh, marriage equality. No, because people now are understanding as more people come I mean, out. It's on TV. Man, you, you, see it, and you see it every day in your workplace and you think, you know, what? Am, how is that threatening my marriage? Yeah. How is that a threat to, to anyone's marriage? It's just an absurd argument. The, uh, you know, let me. This is another, you know, another thing that that ties into that. I think in education and as a person that that is, you know, you were a former educator. Right, right before you went to Congress, and you have a PhD now in in education. EDD, EDD, EDD oh, so you have from a functional. You, know, you have the functional, functional. doctorate. That's, That's amazing. Right. Even That's better. a practical one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> from the University of Miami, go Kings. Yeah, go Kings. Wow. Yeah. Right, so but, but two, so two degrees. <laughs> oye, caro de verdad. And two degree, two a bachelor's and master's from uh, FIU. Ah, affordable, bueno. very affordable. And Space Miami school. Dade. A A. <laughs> Bueno, LA, 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 no cuenta, oh, yeah, oh, no yeah. this, I'm going to have a fight with this guy. Forget about Cuba, abortion. Gay, it's, I'm going to battle him out on community college. Don't you? Don't community you dis- college has its place, but the AA degree is so it's, it's wonderful. Paper. It's great. Oh yeah, Lily and I are going to form this pack and, and, <laughs> and, and educate these guys. AA has more AA weight than an AA. Yeah, my head. <laughs> 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 I know what you're thinking of, AA. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that was, I was an AA, but that, I had to go to AA to make it to the studio today. Never mind. Okay, so what about the Senate? Oh, yeah, the Senate. Those meetings are great. I've been to the Senate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those meetings are great. Those meetings are great. I've been to... You know, with friends to those meetings, they're so uplifting. I never been because to one. you. Oh my gosh, you hear these I was stories just and uh, <laughs> of what there people have no gone through, and were. they have. Uh, they're they're amazing. They're amazing. If you ever have an opportunity to go with someone to listen to these, I'm stories. gonna take your yeah, word for it. You have it. to be confidential and not say what goes on there. But they are 
Unbelievable. You, They're you, so good. Usted era una señora que ya es abuela y ya tiene experiencia en la vida y tiene compasión. Yo soy un tití, un muñeco tití, de verdad. <laughs> Y no me interesan los problemas de otra persona. So I leave that. But it's uplifting. You hear what? Oh my God, <laughs> these people. These people went through so many eso. things and they, and they lifted themselves up and you go, oh my God, she's so Ay, incredible. Ay, Lancita, por favor, a mí me votó la colombiana que me gasté 15 mil dólares en, en, en cirugía <laughs> para mantenerla. Y olvídate, eso ya es el problema que me, que me tocó ayer. Oh, that yo. sounds good. <laughs> oh, let's talk about that. No, 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 no. no. You listen to the yesterday show para que tú veas como que quedé okay. yo. Ayer okay. Ayer me metieron, ayer sí que me metieron I want to go back to this uh, topic that you were talking about the, uh, the you know raising the uh, the you know the, the pushing the bar and educating the constituents of these of these uh, these more restricted GOP candidates. A good example, I think, was one of the debates about intelligent design in schools. Intelligent design, you know, whether it should be taught in the classroom. Uh, as a former educator, don't you agree that? Republicans would gain more traction and more respect from younger people if instead of just agreeing like drones, yes, intelligent design, yes, intelligent design, they would follow up with a simple compromise, something very easy like saying, yes, it should be taught, but not in biology and not in chemistry. Catholic school, Not just Catholic, Jesuit. A Jesuit. A heavy duty. Ay. It's just, you know, the theory of intelligent design is a very valid and philosophical paradigm. Yes, I give it that. It has a place in education. It has it certainly expands minds, it expands thinking. But if it's taught in the appropriate subject. But just to tell you about the the inner struggles of our party, look what's happening with el pobre Jeb Bush with Common Core, where he wants to have some standards in classrooms. And people are thinking that, you know, Common Core, you're going to kidnap my child. You're going to brainwash my child. And, and he's got to fight all of these odd allegations about what Common Core does or doesn't do in the in the classroom and the standards. So, it, I mean, it's a, it's a fight for the soul of the Republican Party. I think, you know, here, this, is, this might get a little controversial, but you know, I think the Republican Party is well armed to combat that. I really do, because, you know, we've seen reports, and, and this is the demonization, I think, of the Republican Party. We've seen reports of people like the Koch brothers, right? They are going to don donate a billion dollars to, towards going against the, the, the Democratic thing. Why not use that money in advertising to do positive things like that and talk about these issues that will strengthen the party from within, show them that they are, you know, that the common core is not a demonization, that a, you know, intelligent design has its place if you teach it within the proper context, if you teach it within the proper subject, that would show that the Democratic Party is more progressive and then give more credulence and credibility to its, you know, real foundation where it's strong in fiscal conservatism, in fiscal, you know, uh, in being fiscally responsible, where that would be, you know, taken more seriously, where I think now people look at that and go, bueno, ese viejo está loco, so yo no voy a oír lo que está diciendo, even though what he said, because listen, Ted Cruz are talking about a, f a flat tax for everybody. Yeah, and, and have the atmosphere where like a Condoleezza Rice mm -hmm. does not have to feel intimidated if she says, I'm a Republican and this is what I believe, that the Republican Party would welcome her. We need to have more platforms for other voices to be heard because there is a lot of diversity. We're, we're, it's not just a cookie cutter party and that's why i hope people like mia love uh and this this new voice is going is going to come out and people see that there's a different republican party and today's republican party is not like the 1950s republican party and that's not a goal that we should aspire to we don't want to be like the 50s we know a lot more now about about science we know we know so much more uh we've evolved from that and 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 the modern family is not like a 50s family and there's a lot of single parents And and moms who are really worried about uh, about how they they're going to balance all the all the demands that they have upon them. We need to have a party that directs our message to that single mom or that single mom when she does find time to vote because it's hard for her. She doesn't see us as her party. Right. She doesn't she doesn't hear our voice being her voice. Do you, We need to recapture that. Do you ever see Congress? Uh, you know. I, 
or well, not Congress, but do you ever see there being a third party being allowed, you know, to enter the debate, to talk about, you know, these you issues? You know, Pepe, it's so hard for, uh, you know, American history tells us that it's really hard for a, a third party uh, to, to grab a hold because— You know, John Anderson tried it, and and maybe that libertarian wing of the Republican Party, there are a lot of people, as you know, in Florida uh, who are more independent, NPA, nonpartisan affiliation, it's the fastest growing party in Florida. Really? More people are registering to vote non-affiliated because they say, man, the Democrats don't, don't stand up for me, the Republicans are way off in, in, the, in the edges, and They say, I'm not going to vote. For, I'm not going to register for either party. So independence in my district and throughout Florida, that's the biggest group. And it's they technically called wanna, NPA. And I think you're, and you know what? I think you're very representative of that. I think that you're progressive ideas. And I think that, you know, I'm re it's very refreshing to hear this coming from. And I, I think my listeners and my followers are, are would be remiss to understand you know to to me <laughs> would be remiss if they didn't realize that people like you do exist in the republican party well you know what happens to me pepe more than and i don't want anyone to think that i'm soft on all of these issues i'm not but well, there's social I get, issues yeah and i get asked about cuba all the time i mean yesterday i did uh you know five interviews all on cuba this morning uh i did four interviews all on cuba and so when people put on their their the news You know, they see me talking about Cuba. So I'll if you I mean, ask me a question, I'm going to answer it. But it doesn't mean that everything I do every day no. is all about Cuba. I'm proud. I'm proud of, of my views, and I'm, I, I don't mind uh, spreading them at all. But I, I'm a lot more than that. Yeah, but, but that's all I ever get asked about. Well, I mean, it, well, you know, we live in South Florida, obviously, and, you know, this has been a contentious issue. You know, Cuba has been a contentious issue since Ortigamo. Bueno, you've been at it for a long time. And it's going to continue. And it's going to continue. But continue. I think, you know, that's why I wanted to bring these issues to, to you know, to you and, and have your response to see, you know, really what I think people need to see that this Republican Party needs to evolve into. You know, purple is beautiful, man. People like my age, people that like, you know, young people that are not really sure they're finding themselves and, you know, seeing, who, you know, who's for them. So it's good to, you know, get as a young person, I'm not social issues are important to me. So it's nice to get social that issues yes. become, you know, it, right now. My stage it's, in my easy, life, it's almost it's, easier it's, to understand for the young person because yeah. it's hard when you sit there and you talk about balancing the economy I'm and you're talking there. about balancing the budget. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have my quito dándole leña ahí a John Stewart. John Stewart va a traer todo. I'm not there in life yet. But if you talk about, oh, gay marriage should be legal for everybody. Okay, which is what the Democrats have been pushing, not to talk about the other things or you know that they how they're going to pay for this. That connects with people yeah, on a more on a more personal. you know personal so it's level. So it's an uphill battle. It's going to be tough for us, but uh, we can control it as long as we have these gerrymandered districts. But once the districts change, people are going to have a wake up call. And like I say, we have two years to govern right. Do And if think, we don't, do we're going to be kicked to the curb. Do you see it expanding? Do you yeah, see this it, becoming? It's too early to tell. It depends on how we do. Uh, we have the House. We have the Senate. And if if we don't pass bills that are really going to help the economy, help young people when they graduate with a great community college AA degree, <laughs> get a good job, then uh, people oh, are going to yeah. say, look, you had your chance. Now we're going to go again because they don't care so much about party. What they want is results oriented, something that's going to help them with their lives. You know, they're worried the kids are graduating and they owe so much money. They owe so much money in student debt and, and they have mortgages, even to rent. You need need first last deposit i mean you need like four thousand dollars just Oye, to rent a place antes que me dieron, antes, o, 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 un, un cuartico así un cuartico así oye un cuartico un apartamento de un cuarto en jayalía vale mil trescientos dólares para que lo sepa ahí en main street well you're sepa. talking about prime real estate property i i represent jayalía no, so no, uh, hey prime, come on come on jayalía now you're talking the cream of the crop here's another example no por favor jayalía is where it's at I'm with the Congress Si tú me dices high class Hialeah. High class Hialeah. AKA Miami Lakes. Miami Lakes. Miami. No, 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 no. 
A mama uh, made me feel. No, that guy in la casa de Tony Bachi Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm right down Palm Avenue and I love it. Oh, yeah. Bueno, you know, Congressman. Oye, tú sabes, yo estuve en mi colegio en Palm Avenue y la calle 11 de South Hialeah. Be, uh, Eastern Academy you Eastern. know well, I put on some airs like oh Eastern Academy <laughs> eran todos cubanitos <laughs> balseros <laughs> it was a great experience Congresswoman nice. it has been an absolute pleasure thank you so much for shedding light on your views thank you for showing us that you are you know you're, you are leaning towards this social you know freedom and, and fiscal conservatism that, that, that the party needs to evolve into we you still stand in my eyes as somebody that is absolutely a pillar in, of, uh, of the Republican party and you continue to be and thank you for no, being I so I am relevant. so thankful that you invited me because this is a new audience don't open up the phone lines porque they're gonna kill me <laughs> no, but, no, no, no just no, kidding no, just no, kidding no, but thank you thank you especially thank you. to uh, to your wonderful your crew here pick? everybody's gotta <laughs> see what a good good hard working crew you have here. Gracias, Pepe. Oh, thank you, Ilana. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hello. Hello, operator. Operator. I have been unconnected.